Welcome to a mostly spoiler-free look at the first Saga expansion for Space Base, The Emergence of Shy Pluto. Let's start off with that. Spoilers. Before we get to the actual review, I want to note that I will be saving all of the potential spoilers for the very end of this review. Overall, including the end, I'm going to completely avoid any spoiler story spoilers. I'm not going to mention anything about the storyline in this. You can explore that on your own. I'm not going to talk about that at all. But what I do want to do is highlight some of the new mechanics that are added to Space Base with this expansion. And to do that, I do have to spoil some of the things because you're going to learn about mechanics that you won't unlock until later in the game. But again, all of this is going to be saved for the very last section of the review, and we'll give you plenty of heads up once we enter spoiler territory. So Space Base, the emergence of High Pluto, was designed by John D. Clare. This is the same designer as the base game and features artwork from Chris Walton was originally published in North America by AEG or Alderic Entertainment Group in 2019. Now this story-driven expansion plays two to five players and features a number of scenarios with each game taking between half an hour to an hour and a half, mainly depending on the player count. Now the MSRP on this expansion is $24.99 US dollars. Space Base, the emergence of Shy Pluto is what AEG is calling a saga expansion for safe space actually the first in a series of Saga expansions that currently is up to the second part. A strange new galactic body has been found, and it's up to you to determine what it is. You will do this through a series of story-based scenarios, each of which adds new components and mechanics to your game of Space Base. Now, after you complete the entire story, the entire Saga, most of that new content will just be integrated in with your Space Base game giving you a new space base experience going forward. And now, while not technically a legacy expansion, as most people would define it, this is something that would be a little annoying to remove again once you've deployed all the parts into the game. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not easy. There, there's two issues. For one, it would be a lot of stuff to go through. And I will say they did do a good job by indicating which cards are new. Um, they're marked and they are numbered. So you can even rebuild the decks back in order. There's a lot of cards to take out, and that's three different decks you're going to have to go through to look for these little symbols to pull out. The other thing to note is this is all or nothing. You either use Shy Pluto or you don't. So as written, it's expected that you either leave all the stuff in or you take it all out. All right, well, for a spoiler-free look at the components of this story expansion for Space Base, check out our unboxing space uh, video, Space Base, the Emergence of Shy Pluto unboxing on YouTube. So inside the box, you will find a rather thick rule book that starts off with an introduction story and introduces you to how to use all the stuff in this expansion. Just like in Space Base, rules are excellent, well laid out, very clear to read, lots of artwork and examples. Now the box includes a plastic insert that neatly holds a deck of large story cards, you know, the, the tarot size cards, a discovery deck, these are those small skinny Space Base size cards, and two sealed mystery boxes. Now the component quality is here is excellent and matches the base game exactly. I could not tell the cards apart. Now I do appreciate also they included a number of warning cards to make sure you don't add anything to the game before you should. There's lots of stop, don't open this. And while you're going through the discovery deck, it tells you when to stop, even though like the rule books say add cards one to seven. Well, card eight says stop on it and isn't one of the cards you would include. You know, it's been disappointing that many other content creators have not been treating this with any sort of regard to spoilers, uh, despite the clear indication by AEG mm -hmm. that it has stages and reveals. Yeah, it's been kind of weird talking about this game because to me, it totally feels like a legacy game and totally feels like these are spoilers. So I wanted to make sure I didn't spoil anything for anyone. Now, the other thing that I do want to note that it does have some legacy style aspects where you are unlocking stuff and adding to the game as you keep playing, nothing here will be destroyed. This is not a one and done. All the cards have indicators show where they're from and they're numbered so you can even rebuild the deck. So this isn't a one and done. There's nothing to write on. There's no stickers. There's none of those aspects of the game. You can technically, if you want, reset the expansion to play through it multiple times or easily pass it on to someone else when you're done with it. All right, well, so how are we using all this new stuff? Walk us through how to play Shy Pluto campaign. All right, so this is going to be high level because, again, I don't want to spoil anything. So you start off by setting up to play Space Base, just like you would in the base game with all the basic rules. 
You then read through the first couple pages of the rule book, which will then have you open up some of the other card packs and reading through some of the story cards that introduce you to the beginning of the game. Now, those story cards will tell you to open up the discovery deck and add some new space-based cards from the deck and put them into play. You then play space-based as you normally would with these new cards in play. Now, once on that story card, sorry, once, once you're playing, you're also going to look at that last story card will tell you what you should do to advance the plot, when you should flip over the next card. And again, I don't want to spoil it, but it's like, you will do this once this, this thing happens during the game. Now, what's interesting is this could very well happen, your first game. Like, you're going to play that first game, Wish I Pluto with those new cards in play and be like, hey, we did the thing and start going to the next one, or it might take you multiple games before you've completed all the requirements on the story card. So it's not just play a game, flip to the next piece of story, yes. play a game, flip to the next piece of story. Something actually has to occur to trigger the next stage? Yes, exactly. So this is not like a game we reviewed a couple weeks back, which is the Wrath expansion for Draconis Invasion which I can't help but compare these two while, while I've been looking at them because they're card games and they both unlock new packs that add new content. Well, the difference is when you're playing Draconis, there are 12 of them. And when you play one game, you open pack one. And then the next game you play, you open pack two. And the next game you play, you open pack three. Now, in this one, you're given a very clear open or flip the card, go to the next card when this happens. Now, once you do do that and you get to the next scenario, Again, you're going to be told, go back to the rule book. And the rule book is where all the new rules are introduced and new mechanics and new icons, very similar to the original rule book. Then you're going to go back to the story cards, and that's where it'll start telling you to put in new cards from the discovery deck. This continues for every future scenario. You, you do whatever it says in the story card, you unlock the new thing, you read the rule book, you read the cards until you unlock the next thing and keep going. Now, sometimes you're going to do this literally in the middle of the game. You will do the thing that it says in the card, flip it, and that game's going to change while you're playing. Others, though, will say flip the next card when you start your next game. So it depends on which scenario you're in. Now, in almost every case, the cards you add to your space-based game, you won't remove. They become a permanent part of your game. And that's actually how it's worded in the rulebook. The, these cards, once added, become a permanent part of your game. Now, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that all of the new ship cards are going to end up in your game eventually. It's only some of the story cards that go away as well as some of the other components that you're not necessarily going to use going forward. Right. So the game, the structure of the game uh, outside of the Shy Pluto playthrough stays more or less the same with, yes. uh, you know, bits and bobs change on certain cards, but you're still playing spaceships on yep. your, your player board. Yeah, you're still buying spaceships to deploy other spaceships to get, get stuff on your turn with your ships and get stuff on other people's turns with your deployed ships. That does not change. Another interesting part about this expansion, which you may or may not take part in, is you can keep playing space space between the scenarios. So like, let's say you and your partner are playing through the campaign and you're really engaged and you want to do it, but then on the weekend, some friends come over and want to play. Well, there's no reason you can't just sit down and play space space, including whatever you've unlocked so far. And then after the friends leave and you get back together on the next couple of days, you can return to your campaign in another play. No, there's also no reason you can't just continue the campaign with new players. There's no reason, unlike a Gloomhaven or something, where you need the same people playing everything. There's no reason not to swap up the player group while playing. You don't need to have the same group playing every time. So though uh, some players may be a bit confused if they have played the base game before, and all of a sudden these new strange cards show up out of the blue. Yeah, what I recommend is if, if you do have someone that's taking part partially or, or part of the campaign is let them read the story cards. Like here, go ahead and read through these while I'm setting up the game. And then they can also grab the rule book and look it up or just the way I've always played Space Base is when a new card shows up in the market, I explain what it does. So I just generally stick with that is, is you go, oh, oh let, this is one of the new mechanics. Now, once you do finish all of the scenarios in the Emergence of Shy Pluto, most of the components you unlock become part of all your future games. And what they're calling that is a new gameplay module. So when you finish Shy Pluto, you unlock a new gameplay module for your future games of Space Base. All right. Well, now that we have covered this vague overview of how this expansion works, <laughs> let's move on to what we thought of the Space Base expansion. Still no spoilers. Still no spoilers. We'll give you a fair warning. So the biggest surprise I had is, as Sean mentioned, no one seems to be 
hiding any of this, right? Everyone's just kind of talking about this game online on their Twitter and doing live streams as if it's like an expansion where you buy it and you open it up and you add some new cards to your game and you play. But that's not it. I had no clue this was a campaign story driven. Like I knew there was a story. It says it's a saga expansion. That means something. But I had no clue it was like a slowly unlocked content. I, I didn't know that was what I was getting into uh, when I first opened this. And you can hear my surprise if you watch that unboxing video. But I got to say, this is a welcome surprise. This format is fantastic for onboarding, for slowly introducing new content to a game. I love the fact that you are getting generally one small set of cards. Like the, a, a slight spoiler, you're getting seven cards the first game. You get seven new cards. Boom. There you go. Seven new cards. Right? Actually, it might be six. Whatever. You get a small amount of new cards, one set at a time. And then they also stuck to adding only one new mechanic at a time. So it's not like sitting and learning all the iconography for space space at once. It's like, okay, here, you're going to learn this new icon. You're going to learn this new icon. Oh, now in this one, we're going to add these new icons. And it also does a really cool thing that I really appreciate where the new cards are added right into play instead of being shuffled in. Like almost every other card game expansion I've ever opened up just has you mix everything together. And then you could actually sit down to play whatever your favorite card game at Clank with the new sunken treasure expansion and never draw a single sunken treasure card. Like it's, it's possible. It's not necessarily likely, but depending on the expansion and how many cards you're adding, well, at the beginning of the game, so let's say you're only adding seven cards, there's the odds of them coming up are terrible. Well, what this does is it makes sure they're in play the turn they're introduced, which I really love that. Indeed. It's tough to balance a game while adding new cards, but then to actually make sure they get into play as well. There's mm -hmm. a whole other difficulty that they seem to have managed to succeed at. Now, I also like the way content was unlocked. I, I like that it could take multiple games to actually complete scenario goals. And I wasn't expecting the opposite, the ability to progress through multiple scenarios in one game. And I didn't expect games to take multiples to get through them. I thought that was really neat. Like, I think it's honestly only one scenario that's like, next time you start a game of Space Space, use this. Every other game was like, so you unlock the thing. And once you do this, you're going to unlock new stuff and keep going. Now, there is one thing we found a bit of a downfall to this system is the speed you are going to get through the content, how quick you're going to hammer through Shy Pluto is going to be very dependent on your number of players and who I'm are playing the game. I'm guessing it's a lot faster the more players you add in. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of the unlocks are by rolling a certain number or buying a specific set of cards. And while the more players are playing, the more common those numbers are going to come up, right? The, the more often you're going to roll the right number, the more often the stuff's going to get bought and empty out the market. So with more players, you're going to hammer through this quicker. So it's just a, it's, it's not a good or a bad thing, but realize if you're playing two players, it's going to take you a while to get through Shy Pluto, where if you're playing the max five player count, you might be able to hammer through it in one night. Now, as for the story, I, it was solid. It was good. Um, I, significantly better than the other game we mentioned a little while ago. Writing was good. Um, what you unlocked and added to the game actually fit the story like it just made sense now we're going to build these things to do this thing and you're like oh now i have the cards where i can build these things um while there are some sections that were more fun than others there were none that weren't fun like all of them were enjoyable there was no like oh those cards i don't like those cards everything was good um in particular the climax i guess i'll call it was awesome um enough so that i've been tempted to reset my game to that state again and just play through that a few more times and possibly save it up so that like if I'm playing at public play, it'd be like, oh, you like space space here. Let's do let's do the climax of Shy Pluto while just taking out the future cards. Well, since I'm uh, still interested in seeing what the unfolding experience uh, is about and experiencing that, we'll have to see about trying that sometime when I'm down. Yeah, even if you again, if you don't play through the whole thing, maybe just try that one specific mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. Now, as for the actual new cards and mechanics, uh, there's some really cool stuff going on here that I think are awesome additions to the game. Um, again, keeping this high level and vague, there's going to be ways to do more on your turn uh, to get more stuff on opponent's turn. Um, there is a new dice rolling mechanic that I do find odd because it has players generating resources for themselves and only themselves, which just seems contrary to the original, like to me, mission statement of Space Base that everyone is invested in every role. That definitely does change with Shy Pluto, which I think is important to know. So this, when I heard about it, was really kind of the strangest aspect. Much of the strength of this game comes from the fact that there is almost no downtime. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You're always at least potentially generating resources on others' turns. And to step back from that constant activity seems like a major concession. Yeah, it's a little strange. Um, I'm going to get into something in the spoiler aspect, but by the time you do finish it, there is something that counteracts this a little bit, but it just feels odd. And to be honest, it didn't, I thought it bothered me. Like the first time I played with it, I was like, whoa, this is strange. But then I got kind of used to it. And especially being the one that gets the bonus resources feels good on your turn. You're like, oh, I'm so close to being able to get the thing. Oh, wait, I get the bonus dice and oh, sweet, I can get the thing. So, so I got to say, and overall, it's still a quick game, like, like waiting for one person to roll one set of dice to generate one more set of resources shouldn't take all that long. Now, that said, I do appreciate the ability to remove this expansion due to, again, the fact the cards are numbered and marked, though it is a pain. Like, uh, I personally wouldn't want to keep swapping things up. I was getting a little annoyed with it the other day. I'm like, oh, shoot, we took everything out. We got to shuffle it all back in. They're like, oh, we have a new player. We're going to have to take it all out. I think in general, most people, uh, myself included, are probably going to finish I Pluto and just leave everything in. And I think that's one of the reasons we see so many spoilers for this, is people aren't willing to go to the effort to hide the stuff from the expansion. They just want to play Space Base with the expansion in. Now, speaking of leaving everything in, um, you can fit all of the unlocked material into the box, including keeping the original space base insert, but that's just the stuff you can keep using. This doesn't include some of the stuff that doesn't carry over and things like the story cards, the stop cards, the two mystery boxes, like the physical boxes or the shy Pluto box itself. But all of the content you unlock, you can keep and will fit in the original insert. Which is always nice. And unless you're considering uh, again, that whole replay from scratch or resale, the story cards are useless once you've unlocked everything, correct? 99% uh, of them. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> you don't need most of them. But yeah, I would just keep them so if someone wants to read through the story. Or again, if you do decide to reset at some point. Mm -hmm. So while we had a great time playing through the story, like we really enjoyed playing through this short campaign. We liked playing the story of Emergence Side Pluto. And I dig most of the new cards that were added to the game. What I'm not sure on is the overall effect, that, that, that module, as they call it, that is unlocked at the end. It's, it's what happens to my copy of Space Base when I'm done. Once you're finished with the story, you have this new way to play. And it introduces a new resource and something new and highly random to spend that resource on. Again, spoilers in a bit. Now, having played a number of games with this new system, I'm not sure I can say that part, that module improves the game. And the people I've been playing with felt the same. Like on one hand, it's a new thing. It is something to keep the game interesting and fresh. And if you're kind of sick of space base, it will change things up. So big thumbs up for that. Um, it also adds even more dice rolling to the game. So if you are a huge fan of dice rolling, let me just say that this expansion is for Shadowrun and Champion fans. If you are a fan of, of rolling lots of dice and higher luck factor, you're probably going to dig this. It also gives something for the players to do on other players' turns, which kind of makes up for that new dice mechanic I mentioned. The problem, though, is you now have to buy cards to get a new resource, then spend that new resource to get the new thing. And I'm not sure if it's worth it, where you could have just spent your money to give you one of the basic cards that give you points, victory points, or, you know, the stuff you usually get. Although buying those has gotten more difficult because all of these new cards dilute down the original deck. So like the very ubiquitous, everyone gets them. They're always available green shift right cards. You know, the ones I'm talking about where you get to shift right for one or two, as long as you, you spend a charge cube and then you, you have to use both dice added together. Like those are a big part of strategy in the original game for anyone who's played it. I'm sure you're well aware. Well, there, just aren't, there are as many in the deck, but because there's so much other stuff in the deck now, they don't come up as often. And the more important one is there are, again, not less victory point ships, but victory point ships are less common. So ones that when you generate a number start giving you points, which are really important to winning the game, are harder to find in the deck. So not a raving review, even after quite a few plays with it all unlocked, yeah. indecision remains. Honestly, I, it's, it's bad. I feel, like, I feel like I'm not allowed to sit on the fence, but like I know there's people out there that love it like like there are people who are like oh you can't play space base without shy pluto game's garbage without it oh you gotta play shy pluto it fixes space base and i gotta say I, I i can see it in a way that some people may think this but personally i don't agree with it i don't think this fixes a problem but rather presents a new option and it's just 
a new option I'm not sure is worth it all the time. Like right now while writing this, I'm not even sure if I like the new system or not. I don't hate it. Like that would be easy. It'd be like, oh, this is a terrible expand. I don't like the end result. Never use it. Just pull out everything out of Shy Pluto. I, I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. Like I've never had a game where I was like, oh, I'm so glad I played with the new module because it let me win. What I really wish is there was an easy way to turn off the module, right? A quick way to just remove that part, just the, the last part. While I can pretty quickly remove all of Shy Pluto, because again, I'm looking for symbols and pull them out, that's not what I want. The way it's designed, it's all or nothing, right? At, at least as written. What I'm tempted to do is just go through myself and get rid of cards that generate the new resource and remove the whole thing you can buy with it, leaving everything else in. Yeah, see, this is, uh, personally, I don't feel like sorry it's been it was a broken game yeah so that's that's my first problem with this whole it it fixes a broken game is i i don't really feel like it was broken now i again i haven't played shy pluto um but one thing i would say is that many games now these days are putting in these features where expansions aren't one monolithic concept Mm -hmm. like it is here in shy pluto Uh, Instead, you get a bunch of individual pieces that can be added or not while still all remaining under the one expansion's umbrella. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. uh, Orléans is the one is the one that first comes to mind where you get an expansion that's got multiple parts. Yeah, you got all these different parts, but you pick and choose. And if if your if your play style doesn't like this at the table, then you don't put it in. Yeah, Orleans is actually a perfect example. That's for the trade and intrigue. No one I played with likes intrigue, but everything else in that expansion, I love. Deanna doesn't like the the pick up and deliver. I don't remember what it's called. The trade, I think, is what that one is, where you're right. bringing goods. She didn't like that aspect. So when I play with Deanna, I don't use that one. When I play with anyone, I don't use the intrigue board. I only know one group of gamers that likes the intrigue board, and, and, <laughs> and, and that's it fits that group. Yep. Yes, it fits that group well. Like to be honest, like like you were saying, it, it it's a, a not not very positive review. And to be honest, no, it is. It, it, I did enjoy playing this. I had a great time playing through the campaign. There were some really fun moments, and it, I love the way it adds new content. I, I I really dig that. Tell a story, put a bit in at a time, let you play with that new thing and discover it through play. I loved unlocking new stuff and getting to try out try out the new materials. And I love the onboarding. Like like. Everyone should be doing this. Everyone who puts out an expansion, do this kind of onboarding. Like, like, don't just give me a new meeple to put on the board. Give me the meeple at the start of the turn to put on the board, right? Like, take that extra step. Now, while player count did affect how quickly we got through it, my biggest concern with this expansion, of course, is that end result. I'm still not completely sold on the new play module that's unlocked in the end, and I think different people are going to have different feelings about this final change. Now, thankfully, if you don't love this end result, you can pretty easily modify your copy of the game and keep the bits you do like. And there is lots to like. All those other new cards are awesome. It's just that final thing that I'm not sure. All right, well, so who is the emergence of Shy Pluto for? Well, first off, people own Space Pigs because it is completely useless if you don't have Space Pigs. So what I will say, though, is if you like Space Base, if you own it, enjoy it, and play Space Base and expect to keep playing it, pick this up. It's good. Even if you only play through it once and then decide to take everything out at the end, I think it's a worthwhile experience. It's at the price point of an exit game, or sorry, an unlock game, or one of the bigger exit games. And, well, you get a similar experience, more, a longer experience. You're, you're going to play, I don't know, 5, 6, 12 games of Space Base before you unlock everything. So I think it's well worth it at that point. I also find it unlikely you're not going to find something you like in Shy Pluto. Even if it's just one new ship type, you could throw that in your game and get even more out of it than playing the campaign. So to me, the campaign's worth it on its own. Anything you choose to keep after the campaign is icing on the cake. With the added bonus that you could resell it or pass it on. And if you're not a lover of Space Base. So if you have Space Base, it's okay. You play it now and then, you're kind of sick of it. I don't think this one's going to change your mind. Now, if your problem is that I played it a million times and it's always the same, this may may win you over. But I I will say we seem to be the minority in this one because many people have indicated that they think this expansion fixed the game. So what I would recommend is give it a shot. Or stay tuned uh, for the, the next part of the show 
where we will be spoiling some things. So listen to the spoilers, listen to what the new cards do and see if that sounds cool. Uh, go watch an actual play to see it played, or you can play this on Tabletop Simulator. So grab it on Tabletop Simulator, sit down. It's free on Tabletop Simulator. Sit down, play a game with all this new stuff and see if it's for you. What I wouldn't do is if you're if you're like, eh, Space Base is okay, I don't. I wouldn't rush out and buy this hoping to save your game with Space Base. All right, well, that's it for the spoiler-free portion of this review. Now, we're still not going to be spoiling the story at all, but we did want to talk about some of the specific detail and new mechanics added to the game and with a focus on the end result of finishing shy pluto so the best part of this expansion is the variety of new cards and new card abilities that are added so here it is last warnings mechanical starting now this to get anyone who's like you know doing the dishes or whatever you need a tax and ding the bell or whatever so the first set of new cards that you're going to add adds a lightning bolt icon so when cards with this icon are activated, you get to add a charge cube to any other card, deployed or not, your choice. This person, I think, is a welcome addition. It's a great way to get cubes on those eight plus cards that are hard to roll without having to get those numbers rolled. In, indeed. Charge cubes, as we've mentioned in the past when talking about this game, are some of the most complex aspects of the game. Uh, so it's nice to get a little more use out of them and, and more yeah. involved involvement with them. And to be honest, by the time you're playing Shy Pluto, unless you bought it with the base game, you're probably now pretty comfortable using charge cubes. Mm -hmm. And you know some of the best strategies are to get this charged up and they get this charged up and then spend this, then this, to do this, to do that, right? Now, another early unlock, this isn't a lock right at the beginning, is a new set of white D6 dice. Now, I could have mentioned them earlier. I did mention a dude die rolling system, but like they're right in the box. They're not hidden. They're not in one of the mystery boxes. So everyone knows you get these nice, pretty dice. I personally think they're better looking than the original dice in the game. Uh, but they do that thing that I mentioned, where you can roll the dice to activate your ships. And it's an ability that shows a new symbol that shows these two dice. They're, for some reason, they're black dice in the icons with arrows. So that always confuses people. And if you activate a ship that has that on it, you then can roll the white dice and you generate resources. But again, you only get it for you. Only you get the stuff on the white dice. The other players get nothing. So this is what I was worried about where the whole every roll matters, but it doesn't with these white dice. And in addition to that, there are even more ways to get these white dice than just ships, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, my gut instinct is to dislike this mechanic, but I'd have to see how much it actually impacts play before uh yeah i'm so disappointed your work's been so busy we were really we're supposed to get in a game before we did this review but i'm like oh we ran out of time again this bothered me at first just because it broke the the, the magic circle of space base that every die roll matters for everyone but then it didn't find it that bad and by the time we get to the end of this that other thing kind of offset this so that you're busy doing your own thing anyway now, a very welcome addition is a variety of new arrow cards. I love arrow cards in Space Base. You can set up some awesome combos with arrow cards. These include arrows that point diagonally instead of side to side. These are my favorite ones. These cards are activated. They let you collect the resources of an adjacent card, but of the opposite type. So when you roll it on your own ships, on your dock ships, you're going to get to activate some deployed ships in an adjacent number. And well, vice versa, if you roll it on an opponent's turn, it'll let you activate some of your personal ships. Other new arrow cards include cards that give you something and cards next to you. Um, there's ones that give income. There's ones that give credits in the card next to you. And then ones that are shifts left instead of shift right. So all the green ones let you shift right, right? Which gives you generally better cards, though not necessarily. Well, there's new arrows that activate on your turn and on the opponent's turn that let you shift left one or two. And you don't have to use the total of the dice. So I just found those very versatile for kind of, you know, being able to adjust your numbers to point to that big powerful card you've got although i i feel like i've used the diagonal cards before without ever playing shy pluto so i is are are there some of those in the base game or was something left into our digital version all i can think of is you seeing the tweets i was sharing when i first unlocked them and i showed you that big combo i had they no, we I, have I've never used, used arrows i have absolutely used the diagonal arrows uh, they, in... they are only unlocked in the third scenario of shy pluto so weird i wonder if there was something in in that got Maybe. left in in our digital play then yeah i don't know i i, I and possibly or maybe when we played down here no because i don't think you played since i put in the no. shy pluto stuff no i haven't 
That's why I'm wondering if we played Shy Space Base with Shy Blue in it down oh, here. Oh, maybe. But we hadn't finished. That's maybe. what I'm trying to remember. Maybe, maybe. we had locked, unlocked some of it. Possibly. I don't know. But the diagonal cards are awesome. And to be yeah. honest, I, I love all of the arrow cards. Like, like having more arrow cards is one of the big thumbs up, especially the diagonal. I love that shift between the two different resource generation mechanics of the game. Uh, eventually, you unlock variable sector cards. So what these have, instead of a single number in the top right, it'll say like 8 plus or 1 plus. And what those do is when you bought, purchase those cards, you can put them in slot 8 or higher, or you can put them in slots 1 or higher, which lets you uh, possibly more powerful than the card you're placing, lets you deploy basically any card on your thing, which can be huge. I love being able to pick any spot to place a ship and deploy. Yeah, so these are a, a big deal and rumored to be a major factor in the next expansion as well. So sounds like more of those. Now, there are other new cards. Um, one of the neat things they do is at the beginning of the game, they give you a hand of starting cards. So normally when you start Space Base, you draw off the one deck and everyone gets a random card. Well, when you play Shy Pluto the first time, they give you new cards that you shuffle and every player gets a new card. So that's part of that. Introduce the new mechanics right away. Um, so there's those, and then there are just a bunch of new cards with new abilities, right, that, that come out. Now, the biggest change, and this is the thing I think most important to talk about, and why I almost didn't want to put spoilers on this, because I kind of want to explain this, it's when you get to the boss fight, and you unlock patrol ships, and all the cards that generate patrol ships. So patrol ships are a new resource that you indicate through tokens, little cardboard tokens. They come in one of the sealed boxes. Now, the mission you unlock them in is the best of the bunch. It's it's the climax I mentioned earlier. It's 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 a boss fight where we, we had a hard time calling them pro, so we were like, they're fighters because you're attacking something and having to defeat it. And it might take multiple games to defeat this thing. Um, this is the one I want to reset. Now, the problem with this scenario is it introduces stuff that only happens in this fight, like only ever happens in this fight, including a set of dice that are only used in this fight. There's like a big blue die and a bunch of little tiny dice that you only use for this particular fight only, which just seems weird. Yeah. <laughs> so a fun one and done. That's yeah. frustrating. But that's why I kind of want to reset to this one sometime. So I don't know, like that, that was the biggest here stuff I'll never use again. Let's put it aside. Now, after the box fight, you unlock what is called Miners of Shy Pluto, a gameplay module for Space Base. That's in quotes. Is Miners of Shy Pluto a gameplay module for Space Base? This is the part that changes up all your games of Space Base going forward. When the boss is defeated, you unlock a ton of little purple dice and you get a baggie for them that even has like Space Base on it. It's a really nice baggie and you put them all in there. Those patrol ships are now part of the game from now on. So now they're kind of mining ships instead of fighters. There are now even more cards you throw into deck to generate those ships and they're split over all three of the market deck so it's not like they're all level one cards they're all over the place now these new patrol ships are used for one thing and one thing only which is buying these new dice and these new dice are called shy plutonium cubes so there's a starting set of these that are more reddish than purple that are randomly placed onto this new shy pluto board with six spots above each slot for the dice is a cost in patrol ships Lowest costing two, the highest costing four. At the end of any of your turns, you can spend patrol ships to take one of these dice. Take some shy plutonium for yourself away from this board. Then all the cubes slide down to the left and a new one's drawn from the bag. Now the ones in the bag are actually better than the ones that start up at the beginning of the game. Now each shy plutonium cube features five blanks. The D6, five are blank, one side with a bonus symbol on it. You're going to roll all of your shy plutonium dice every turn. Though when you're playing four or five players, you do you skip your turn. You only roll your, your purple dice on the opponent's turns. And then you're going to take any face-up bonuses that's showing on these dice. Now, these bonuses include your main resources, credits, income, points. I, uh, there is also one that generates um, ships. And there is one that generates rolls of the white dice. So do you ever start to lose track of what color dice do what? It just seems like it's it's the, the number of dice in this game has uh, gone up remarkably. What they did that's actually kind of smart, though I don't get why, maybe for cost, is the standard blue dice are what you roll every turn. So that didn't change. The new dice that roll on your turn are white, but the, honestly, they're just decent. You could roll the blue ones. 
Uh, the white choice is weird again because the icon's black, but I think it just so it shows up. So I don't go, know why they didn't give you black dice. Then all these new dice are Hobbit dice or something. They're they're small, very rounded dice. Like they do not have hard corners. Um, you'll see pictures on the written review, I'm sure. Um, and I don't know how many I have on any of my social media pictures because I try to avoid those. <laughs> but they are smaller, so they do stick out. Uh, the only part that's annoying is having to separate one color between games. So what I do is I keep all the purple ones in the bag and the red ones I should just put separate in a box in a trough just so I don't get them mixed up. And I just found them on BGG. So that, yeah, yeah there's exactly... tiny little dice and they're very rounded, very rounded yes. corners. So what this mining expansion does, it adds a new resource to the game in the form of patrol ships, but it also has the potential for a ton more dice rolling. And these dice add a huge random element to the game. Because again, each die only has one side that gives you anything. It's the odds on these dice, the, the one in six chance they actually give you anything that has everyone I played with questioning their worth. Using Miners of Shy Pluto adds a lot more luck to what's already a luck heavy game. And that's the part not everyone's going to like. Yeah, though, though it makes sense mechanically with mining being a long churning process that doesn't always result in you getting th something. Yeah, true. Thematically, sure, it works. It works. I think my biggest complaint about Miners of Shy Pluto is that they call it a module. To me, a module is something you can turn on and off. And as we noted earlier, this is designed to be all or nothing. You technically, as written, can't play the game without using Shy Plutonium dice. And then your deck, like, like you could pull the Shy Plutonium, I guess you could. You could pull the Shy Plutonium dice up. But then your deck's filled with all these cards that give you patrol ships. And all the patrol ships are useless for the dice. Now, you could just remove everything marked as Shy Pluto, but then you miss out on cool things like those lightning bolts and the, the new new shifters, the new arrows, and the, the new card that lets you activate any of your blue abilities. And, like, you lose all that. Like, it's just weird that you lose the good stuff and this. Like, there's no way to literally just strip out the one thing. No easy way. So how broken would it be if you just ignored those patrol ships? So the problem is almost every ship that gives you patrol ships, that's all it does. So they become literally useless cards. Like there would be absolutely zero reason to buy them. Well, I guess they flip the card that's there. They're a way to deploy your ship, but like they're even less useful than colonies because they will get you nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, what I think you could do is just manually remove it. Literally go through the deck, face up, don't look at Shy Pluto cards, and just remove any card that generates patrol ships. That should work. And honestly, I think this is an option that should have been included officially. Like I, I've mentioned before, we've got an entire episode on house rules. I hate house ruling games. In general, if I feel I need to house rule a game, I'm just like, well, the game's not great. I should go play another game that works. And I kind of feel that way with this. Is I'm like, if you had officially said, you know, one way to play without the module is go through and just remove this and feel free to use the rest of Shy Pluto. I'd feel better about it. And I realize it's silly. It's, it's the rules lawyer in me. So those are the big game changes in Shy Pluto. Now, along with this, you do get a bunch of other new cards with cool abilities, including more cards that let you swap spots of cards in your tableau, cards that exist only to activate other cards. Like they don't do anything on their own, but they let you do something. There's even a card that's like, let me let you activate any card to your left and so on. All in all, there's a lot of cool stuff in here that adds a lot of variety to space space, regardless whether you love or hate or are indifferent to the new mining module. Well, that's it for our review of Space Base, The Emergence of Shy Pluto. I invite you also to check out Mo's written review of this expansion over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.